series of videos, we're looking at René Shaw's Productivity Plus Activators Pro software. Activators Pro is a PC-based application that's used for the programming of René Shaw's spindle probes and tool setters for machine tools. It's designed for setting up parts and tools prior to the manufacturing process, but can also be used to help control that process while it's running. Normally, this would be programmed by a machine tool programmer, but we're down here by the machine tool today just because it helps us show what the software can do. In a previous video, we've looked at the setting up of the part and the coordinate systems in the probe before programming. And what I want to do in this video is just look at some of the various programming structures and tools that we can utilize before we really start getting in looking at the various features uh, that we can measure. So, coming back into our UI, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly add some features. We are going to look at various features available in another video. We're just going to throw a few things in here so I can show the programming structure and some of the options that are available to you. So I've selected this point here and I'm just going to throw a point on the model here. Uh, hit the return key and that's going to throw up the dialogue. Now anything we create in Activities Pro will give you this dialogue and what you'll have is a series of settings and also some subsequent help on the right hand side that kind of guide you what those settings mean. So as you can see here I can click through the various items that we can configure and that help will change. So I'm just going to click OK now. As I said, we'll revisit this in another video, more specifically when looking at various features we've got available. So I've added in my point. Now what you'll see above that is something called an inspection cycle. So this is part of this whole programming paradigm we have. Every feature you can create, whether it's measured or constructed, that will sit under an inspection cycle. So all the settings we have in this inspection cycle will affect those features. So if I double click on that now, we can actually have a look at some of the things that are included in this. So first and foremost, we have our standoff and over travel distances. So these are distances in millimeters or inches um, that the probe is going to start away from any surface and then also the distance that it's going to search beyond that surface. Obviously, if we get our heights wrong and it can't hit or doesn't find it, we don't want it to just keep going, we want it to stop. So this is the parameters we can set up. Obviously, you might be programming in tight, so quite a tight gap. So you might want to reduce these, or actually you're programming a part that hasn't been accurately set up, so you might want to increase them so that you can find that part. So it's really up to you. Of course, what we set here, any features that sit under this particular inspection cycle will be subjected to these standoff and over travel distances. So here we've got our probe name. In the previous video, we set up our probe database. Obviously, there's only one probe in here at the moment, so that's got that selected. This is where you would choose the probe for your machine. Next setting here is our safety plane height. So with the whole programming notion we have in here, we have everything set at a safety plane height. So what this means is we don't have to worry about the tool paths between features we program. I can measure one feature and it's going to come up to that safety plane height, move across and then down to measure my next feature and so on. So that means we don't have to worry about it. You would set this safety plane height probably above any fixture and you've got just at a place where you know the probe can move freely without actually colliding with it. At the moment that's set to 50 millimeters uh, and we'll leave it at that now for now for this demo. So next we have our coordinate system. So this is the coordinate system that's going to be active on the machine and that the probing is going to happen in. So we've got that set to G54. If you remember that's set to this particular location on our part and that's fine we can leave that there for now as well. Uh, the FCS behavior this relates to multi-axis axis tasks and we'll tackle that in another video. Okay. We also have a series of tolerances that are available here to the user. These relate to our reporting or printing of results. Again, something we'll look at later on, but um, for now, we're just gonna stick with those default values. Now, if we've changed anything here that we wanna keep reusing again and again, one of the options we have is our save as defaults button down here. We tick that, that means that any new inspection cycles we create is gonna use those same settings. So I hit okay. So that's now been saved. So we can see this particular measured point, that sits under that inspection cycle. If I create more features under there, they'll all be subjected to that, those same settings. So uh, I've measured that now. I'm just gonna throw in um, an update. So one of the things we have is here, we measure a feature and we have to then do something with those results. Again, I'll come back to this another time, but I'm just gonna pick a WSS update for now, just so we can see what that looks like in the program. So now we have this tree structure. So I can see I've got my point and I've got an update after it. 
I can actually, using the shift key, select all of these things, do control C or right click and hit copy. And then actually I can hit paste and paste in duplicates of those same things. So with this tree structure, it's actually very easy to copy features and maybe then tweak things you want to be different, a different position. Um, or ultimately I can take things, I can click and hold on them and drag them around within inside this program. So it's very, very powerful in terms of copying and pasting, dragging things around within the program so that they sit in the sequence as we want them to. Okay, so that's some of the basics that we have for creating programs for the Inside AE Pro. In a subsequent video, what we're going to look at is actually what features we have on offer for programming. Uh, if you're interested in what you've seen, please go to www.renishaw.com forward slash productivity plus for more information.